All right, you guys, back here with another video today. And today we're talking about why we follow the 180 degree shutter rule in the modern digital era. And the short of it is, it works. But now in all seriousness, this rule was established way back in the film era, which basically states that the frame rate and the shutter speed are interconnected. And if you maintain a certain relationship between these two factors, you'll get the most realistic and cinematic looking motion blur that mimics that of the human eye. So essentially in film cameras, they have what's called a rotary disc and they rotate and have one full revolution per individual frame of your image. So for example's purposes, we're gonna use 50 frames per second as our reference point. So in 50 frames per second, you're gonna have 50 individual frames that make up that reel in one second, one over 50. So that's gonna be your max shutter speed that you can use, one over 50. And essentially, if you double the frame rate, if you cut your rotary disc in half, instead of letting 360 degrees of light in, you'll let 180 degrees in, thus having your frame exposed for half the amount of time for each frame, then you'll have something that has the true realistic looking motion blur. So essentially, if you're at 50 frames per second, every time you have a 180 degree shutter, you'll be at one 100th of a second. If you go to 200 frames per second, I mean, if you go to, yeah, 200 frames per second, then you, uh, you have an equivalent shutter speed of 1 over 400 if you're at 180 degrees. If you're at 360 degrees, you'll be back at 1 over 200. Essentially, you want to have double your frame rate because it gives you the most realistic motion blur. Because if you go slower than that and you go up in your angle to 270, 360, you're going to let more light in your image, but you're going to have more artifacts. You're going to have more slow, methodical looking motion blur. If you go faster than, let's say, 90 degrees, 45, you'll let less light into your image and you see your sensor, but then you'll have more choppy, more jarring, more hard in your mind looking motion blur. You ever look at that motion blur and it's really just jarring and your mind just can't keep up? It's because the motion blur is too fast. It's not natural. It's not what your eye expects to see. And that's why you don't want to use these shutter speeds when you don't need to or shutter angles. Now, when you go to mechanical cameras, more in the digital era, which pretty much everybody has at this point, smartphones, point and shoots, DSLR, mirrorless, they have mechanical shutters. So you have focal planes, leaf shutters, so on and so forth. But essentially in focal plane shutters, mechanical shutters, like you'll have a actual shutter that's inside of the camera that's a curtain. And if you have a mirrorless camera in particular, the sensor behind your camera, which is get exposed to light, is always open. So it's always like this. You have your shutter, your shutter will come down, depending on your manufacturer, come back open, to set the exposure and then close. And that time in between the shutter is open, it's closed, is dependent on your shutter speed. So essentially, faster shutter speed, the shutter closes a lot faster. Slower shutter speed stays open a lot longer. And it creates what's called an actuation. And if you have a mechanical camera, then you're gonna have an actuation. All actuations always occur. And after a long time, honestly, your camera will break after a certain amount of actuations, but that's a later topic. <laughs> so. Essentially, um, these mechanical cameras, um, these digital cameras don't generally have shutter angle because they don't have the disc and they have the mechanical shutter. So then you have to set the appropriate shutter speed, which are increments of seconds, one second, two seconds, half a second, fourth a second, and so on and so forth. And like I mentioned, you want to have that relationship of twice your frame rate. So the actual equation that you use for mechanical cameras will be one over double of your frame rate. So one over two times 50 frames per second. So one over two times 50, one over 100. 30 frames per second, one over two times 30, one over 60. 100 frames a second, one over two times 100, one over 200 of a second. You get the, you get the gist of what I'm saying here? You get the pattern? So if you generally follow this, you're gonna have your most realistic, most cinematic looking motion blur. It'll be consistent across your frame rates as you navigate to do regular motion, or slow motion, or super slow motion. Because once you slow that image down and post, and those frames become a lot slower, it'll match the shutter speed, it'll match the actual motion that you're expecting in your lower frames, which had the original relationship of double that of your frame rate. Um, generally, you don't want to break this rule. You want to stick with this rule because of the fact that it gives you, again, the most realistic looking motion blur. I cannot stress that enough. You only want to go faster than your shutter speed, so have something that's a little bit slower um, because of the fact you want to have an artistic, you want to have an artistic um, thing that you want to bring to light. So if you have a faster shutter speed, let's say like one over 100, if you're shooting at 160th of a second, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you do this because you want to be able to get more motion in your image. So you see this a lot in like Game of Thrones, House of Dragons, where they have those really fast action sequences, when they have those really big battle royales. You see them something like Jarhead or other war movies, where they're trying to get every single bit of detail into that image. Image. They want you to see everything that's going on. So they'll sacrifice the authenticity of the image to make it look a little bit more 
mm, I'd say aesthetically pleasing in terms of seeing all of the imagery in the actual footage itself. And you go something slower, going back to 60 frames per second, you can go to 130 if you're trying to get something artistic like a dream sequence or a disoriented sequence or somewhere where you're lost and you're shooting a POV perspective and you just want to look dizzy, dazed, and confused, right? These are the only times you really want to break the 180 degree shutter rule, but other than that, you always want to have your camera set to match that of the frame rate with that relationship we talked about before, either with shutter angle or shutter speed. Generally, like I mentioned, you know, everybody's going to have access to shutter speed, so it should be something that everybody should pay attention to, everybody should have, have a knowledge of. Shutter angle is something that you're going to find in more higher end cinema grade cameras and film cameras, so more often than not, the average consumer is not going to have to use shutter angle, but if you can and you have the ability to use both, always use shutter angle because it maintains the relationship between frame rate and shutter speed so much easier. Um, and you know, that's pretty much everything I got for you guys on this topic. You know, I really love using the 180 degree shutter rule. I thought I found a lot of value once I understood this and really implemented this properly and break this or creatively when I actually have a vision I want to bring to life. And I think you guys should do that as well. So I appreciate you guys taking the time with me as always. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe to come back for videos like this one and other ones in the future. But until next time guys, peace.